Um, how to greatly improve your ICL size and numbers. Uh, I have a, obviously a financial interest in the ultrasound part of it, and I'm a Zeiss consultant. So currently the laser part of the refractive surgery market is 95%, and the ICL market is, well, 1% or 5%. I'll get on a soapbox about this later. The considerations, obviously, are to do with safety and effectiveness. And the list of how to improve your practice in ICLs is very long, and you all know this. But I think that the main thing is that size matters, because size is what leads people to shy away from ICLs. Even though it works very, very well, the exchange rate of one or two per 50 is too high, obviously, proven by the fact that the technology has been developed very well over the last 20 years. There's some power users amongst us, but it doesn't have high uptake. And you can look at the old generation studies and ignore the cataract rates, but what we're looking at here is the spread of the control of the volt using white to white. And you know, everyone knows that oversized lenses are not great but can be okay, and underside lenses cause cataract, but that's been made better by the whole. Okay, that's all fine. But the fact is that posterior chamber biometry of where we're putting the lens should actually solve this and make two out of 50 go to two to a thousand. It should. It's not a complicated equation. It's simple arithmetic. Now, why is it so disappointing, ultrasound? Well, it's because if you look at all of the handheld devices, the sulcus measurement repeatability is half a millimeter. And that is one size of lens. And that's the repeatability. That's one standard deviation. So three standard deviations is one and a half millimeters. Well, you might as well not use it because it's like guessing. Higher frequency ultrasound and now commercially available high frequency ultrasound has a tenth of a millimeter repeatability of the sulcus. And that is going to change things. Preoperatively, with an OCT, you can say that the white to white is going to somewhat correlate to the sulcus, but is it, where is it and where is the zonular plane? Because if you're looking at an actual scan of the posterior chamber, the sulcus is one measurement, but the other measurement is where is the zonular plane? Where is the lens rise? What is the lens rise? Therefore, what will be the lens ICL separation based on that lens rise? And by the way, what is it going to do to the angle? once this lens is in the eye. So the preoperative assessment, the, sorry, now the postoperative assessment, we can do this with OCT now, but what does that tell you? I mean, you can measure the vault, but what else do you know? You don't know where the foot plates are. You don't know if that ICL is twisted back here, like way oversized, or you just know that it is in the right place, but it's just a little bit too big. Lens rise, lens separation, true vault. These are the measurements that we need to be able to do. And Francesco Versace, who, the genius who you saw talking about the, um, the Zeus uh, 39, uh, SR39 yesterday, he developed this software, was in the process of developing this software with our good friend Carlo Lovisolo, um, where you, know, you would put in the power and the, and the length of the ICL, and this is a theoretical exam example, but you would therefore be able to simulate where this lens would go on an actual posterior chamber. So that when you're looking postoperatively, Instead of asking, you would know. You would know, you would be able to tell that this was going to happen. You were going to make the angle very, very narrow, even though the ICL was going to be in the right place. Now, let's just go over quickly the science of white to white, because it seems to still be a bit confusing. Sulcus to sulcus diameter, predicted by white to white. The correlation is such that if you use the white to white, you have a 38% chance of being out by half a millimeter, which is one lens size. If you use angle diameter from OCT, you have a 32% chance of having an error of more than 0.5 in your prediction. If you try a multivariate regression analysis, as we did, inserting H, sphere, cylinder, spherical equivalent, white to white, ACD, SIMK, coronal thickness, and angle diameter, the only surviving terms were ACD and angle diameter, and still 25% of the eyes would have had an error of 0.5 millimeters. If you have an error of 0.12 millimeters, the chances of being out by 0.5 now goes down to less than 1%. Others have okay, demonstrated, power users of, of, of handheld ultrasound have demonstrated better volt control. 
And our study with Carlo before he passed away showed that in his series, if we had used white to white, 54% of the eyes would have been, had a different size ICL chosen for that eye. And in his series, we got the, the, the interquartile range of the 50% of the eyes. Look at the range of the 50% versus what it would have been had we used white to white. Look at the range of the maximum to minimum using sulcus and not using sulcus. And by the way, zero is, is the actual crystalline lens. So it's clear that this question of, 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 of where we are in the market, in, in my view, and I'm a, I'm a corneal surgeon, you know that, but my honest belief is that the market forces would make it such that the ICL would be the dominant refractive surgical procedure in the world if the sizing was solved. That's my, that's my theory. The barrier to entry for laser eye surgery after you finish your residency it's a fellowship, it's getting a femto, an eczema. You're spending 750,000 euros just to get started with all the tomography and everything that you've got to do. The barrier to entry to an ICL is an open door with the key already in the door. Because all you have to do, you already know how to do cataract surgery, that's what they taught you in residency. And then all you have to do is invest in high frequency ultrasound. Well, how else are you going to do it? You can ask your grandmother, you can measure white to white, but if you want to size ICLs, get high frequency ultrasound, get good at a handheld if you want to do that. But I suspect that you could increase the ICL market by a factor of, 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 of 100, because the basic skills to do ICLs are present in every single eye surgeon graduating from high school. The skills for LASIK take a long time to acquire, and the investment is huge. So somehow it seems to me that the ICL is actually the procedure that would succeed in the marketplace because any ophthalmologist doing one a month would be just as good as one doing, you know, 12 a month because it's basic skills of going into the anterior chamber with a bit of visco. That's my feeling about the whole thing. Thank you very much.